Hello folks, I am Zorgo and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up and use IS Boxer to two box or three box characters. This is a beginner's guide. This goes under the assumption that you already have the IS Boxer suite, that you've gotten that from Lavish Software, I'll link it in the description if you haven't, that you're either on the seven day trial or you've decided to purchase or uh, subscribe to their service, and you've gone through their window layout wizard, set up your UI, have your windows tiled the way you want them, and you've logged into the game and you're asking yourself, now how do I make IS Boxer work for me? Well, the first thing that I'm going to say is that I would definitely start preferably with running two tunes, two boxing, or three tunes at the very most. You might start with two and then expand yourself out to three. For the purpose of my video, I'm going to start with three because I can go through this what you need to do for two boxing or three boxing through this method. This is going to be a very beginner way of beginning to two box or three box in EverQuest. There's going to be a lot of functionality with the IS Boxer suite that I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to go into key maps. I'm not going to go into broadcasting and how you use that to control multiple characters from your keyboard. What I'm going to do is basically show you, I would say, an advanced true box method of multiboxing with IS Boxer Suite. That being said, where is this going to work best? A TLP server that allows multiboxing? This will be great. It's not technically true boxing, and so you won't be able to do this on Aradun, but Rizlona you would be just fine. In your low levels, this works very well. So if you're new to the game and new to boxing, and you're leveling up a new crew, this is a good way to start learning how to control characters using the IS Boxer uh, functions. And the other thing is if you're on an emulation server that uses uh, the IS, that allows multi-boxing, this can work for you there as well. Now, where it won't work, if you're trying to run six people on a live server at level 115, I'm not sure that this method is going to work for you. Once you get into four characters and five characters and six characters, the method that I'm going to show you is not going to work. You're going to need to look for other functionality that IS Boxer has. That being said, IS Boxer does not automate characters the same way that MQ2 does. It uses a very different system in how you control your characters. Like I said, it's much more akin to true boxing than it is to um, automated multi-boxing. So, I've got my warrior. He needs to position. I can't really run him. Mage and wizard, they're a good combination. What about a cleric? You always need a cleric. Well, if I were running a cleric, I would actually probably have the cleric as being the driver in this setup and have two casters as backup, then use a tank merc. Because the system with a cleric, it's you're going to have a little bit extra hard time targeting under this system. Like I said, this is a beginner system. And I think that uh, as I progress through the tutorial, you'll see what I mean by why the cleric may not work as a secondary character in this situation. And all, I could also probably talk about situations where you could make it work. But cleric mercenaries are very strong. So if you're just learning this system, maybe start that way. But the other thing is the tank mercenaries are very strong. So start by maining your cleric and uh, having two casters on the side, and you can certainly do it that way as well. All right, so without any further ado, how am I going to do this? I'm going to be using the video effects aspect of IS Boxer. And essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pulling essential parts from Ziglo's UI 
and essential parts from Zaglo's UI and I'm going to be placing them on my UI like, you know, picture in picture. But I'm also going to make those little windows that I'm pulling and putting onto my UI. I'm going to make them pass through and click through so that I can actually control what I've got captured in those windows that I've added to my UI. So that's ex how it's going to work. With that in mind, notice I preset my UI up to leave me the space for the mage and the wizard. Now this is going to be the person controlling it, but I need a source of control. So Ziglo is one of my sources that I'm going to be adding, and Zaglo is the other source that I'm going to be adding. So I'm going to switch over to their UI. Here I am on my wizard right now. So notice that I've also manipulated the UI of my wizard. So what I've done is I have thought about my wizard, the bare minimum of things that I need for him to function effectively. And I have thought about the bare minimum of information I need to know. And I've thought about the bare minimum of real estate that I can put it in. So therefore, I put his nameplate here, need to know who he is, what his health is, what his mana is. I've got his target in here. I have one spell bar, or hot bar. As you level and start getting AAs, this can be expanded, but keep in mind that takes more space. I've got his spell bar, and in this empty spot, that's where I actually have his cast bar, so I can see what he's casting and if he's casting. So that's basically what I need. I'll go into the socials that I have set up right now, but here at this low level, you can see I still have empty buttons, so I'm not too uh, worried about uh, having space to control. Now then, if you don't know, you can resize everything in EverQuest, and so that's the way I've done this to get it to be the size that I want it to be. Notice, for example, on my target window, that I have eliminated the ability to see the buffs. You may think that's crazy, but I really don't need to see the buffs. For my purposes here, I just need to know what Ziglo is targeting and what the health of that creature is. If I need to know what debuffs or buffs are on that, that then I can, all, I can now know what it is. I can target it in my Warriors UI and I can see all that stuff because I haven't manipulated his target window. With the spell bar, just like everything else on the UI, is changeable and sizable. So if you're wondering how I got it that way, that's how I got it that way. But I've got everything I need for this guy to run effectively in a battle in this little square. So now, this is the source material, and I want to send it to him. So the bread and butter is Control-Shift-Alt-G, and that brings up your IS box or control panel. On the tabs up here, you want to be on video effects. Then you want to make sure that you are listed as a source. Oops, I unclicked it. Source, video effect source, because I'm the source being sent to him. And then, this will be blank on yours. You want to give it a name. So I'm going to call this one Ziglo three. Nope. They don't like numbers, so I'm going to spell it out Ziglo three. And that's because I already have a Ziglo one and a Ziglo, Ziglo two that I used to test this out. As soon as I've named it, so Ziglo three, and don't you know they watch their tutorial as well they kind of talk about the naming conventions but just keep it simple simple so that you you can recognize where it is so Ziglo 3 and then I am going to add and when I add two windows pop up this small green one over here and this video effects editor on the right sometimes this green box will be kind of hidden behind the IS box or control panel. So keep in mind that if you don't see it, that's probably where it is. 
you pull it out and this is actually your, the bread and butter of what you want to use. This is the window that is going to say what on my UI I want to capture. So keep in mind the green is what is captured. That title bar doesn't. So you want to make sure that you make it so that the title bar isn't covering something that you want to capture. So see how I'm taking it and I'm putting it to the corner of that little box I made on my UI, being careful to capture everything. And now it's just a matter of clicking and dragging over that little square that I wanted. This should capture everything in a window to send to my warrior. All right, so named, source, got it sized. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Just leave that as auto. Save. Ziglo 3. It's there. And I'm done. It's that easy for this part. Now I'm going to go back to the warrior. And this is the person that wants to view Ziglo's source. So do the same thing. Control Shift Alt G brings up the UI. I'm on the video effects tab. I want to make sure that this is listed as viewer. Try again, viewer. And then the video effects name, I can actually go to the drop down. There it is, Ziglo3, add, and it pops up. Here it is. Now it may look like it's actually that same small window that we had before, but it's not. Now then, is it working? What you do is you hold your mouse over it, you hold the control button, and look, there I can see it. It's really, really small though. I wonder why. Well, what I can do is on this viewer side, I can click and drag and create that bigger. Now you'll notice the aspect ratio changes and so you gotta have a pretty good eye for keeping squares squares or things are gonna be get bent out of shape and keep it as small as you can and that is gonna keep the resolution a lot more uh, you know a lot closer to what the native re resolution but for me that's about what my eyesight can handle right there. Now then the reason that it's small like this, you're like, well, that's not the size it was on his UI. You go back to this UI and you're like, that's a much bigger piece. But remember the way that your windows layout is tiled. When I'm on Bo Boerlin, Ziglow's screen is one quarter of the size. And so the square that gets projected over here is one quarter of the size. So you will have to resize it to get it viewable enough for you to be able to use it. The beauty of two boxing under this system is because you've got one character on one screen and one on the other, it's going to be exactly the same size as the UI when you pull it over and the resolution is going to be a lot better. But this still works. I like to keep it as small as possible also because it gives me enough real estate, but not so small that I can't tell what buttons it is that I'm pushing. That's essentially it. So to test and see if it's working, let's see, Control-Shift-Alt-G, that window is up and it's not working. I can see it all, but it's not working. What I do wrong? Well, Control-Shift-Alt-G brings this up again. Wait, where's that video effects editor? Just click anywhere in that green space. Oh, there it is. Aha, repeater pass through. Got to apply that. So click repeater pass through, apply. Let's try it again. And now I have functions. So Ziglo, look, he's casting a shield spell now. Ta-da. It worked. Now we need to pull the mage over. Come over here. Now I'm on the mage's UI. 
Control Shift Alt G. I'm not a viewer anymore. I want to switch to source. Remember, this is the source material, and this is going to call, be called Zaglo 3, because I've done a couple of tests on this one as well. Add. Small window comes up here, sometimes hidden, remember, behind one of the other windows. Put the green square on it. Watch the title bar. Now, though, on this one, I have more I need to capture because I'm not a mage if I don't have my pet. So I've got my pet window also captured. A little bit bigger window here. So now that I've got that captured, got it named, I can save it. And Control Shift Alt G. Back to my warrior, Control shift alt g I'm on the Video Effects tab, I'm a viewer, now I want to add Zaglo 3. So, add, there's his box, click, bring it down, see if it's working, it looks like it's working, but really small. Not only that, I kind of want to have his stuff a little bit closer to me. So I'm going to move Ziglo over here. I'm going to go over here. Pull this down. Check my aspect ratio. It's a little wonky. Let's get that tightened up just a little bit. Can I stand that? That looks pretty good right there. And then, I think I'll put my mage right on top of it. Uh, let's see. Do I have the space? Look, I'm so close. Yeah, I can do it this way. Yeah, let's just move everything over to the left just slightly. there. Beautiful. Pass a repeater. Apply. Control Shift Alt G. And now I have both of them. Let's see. Is he click through? Huh. Control Shift Alt G. Click on that. Repeater pass through. It wasn't clicked. Huh, thought I did that. Control Shift Alt G. So. Yep. And he's functioning. There he goes. Shield yourself, man. Good job. So now I have the basic functions of each of these characters on here. They can each cast from my UI. If they don't fizzle. And this is where your hot bars come in. Right here. So I'm going to go back to the UI on Ziggler's screen. So what did I set up? First of all, I told you how I color coded them. Notice that he's purple. And I set up three basic uh, socials to start with. These are probably ones you're very familiar with in EverQuest. If you don't know how to make a social, you're probably not watching this video right now. So I'm going to assume that you do. So when you right click and make, or when you create a social, I've got this one named Target Warrior. I color coded it to match just in case I need to know. It just helps me target BOH for Boerlin, my warrior, except. So I've got one that's Target Warrior. One that's follow warrior, and one that's assist warrior. And I haven't turned the auto attack off on these characters, I don't think, but you can do that, and so that way when they assist, they're not uh, turning melee on. But this is just a little tutorial, so bear with me. Okay, so now I've got those three basic things set up on both Ziglo and on Zaglo. 
and I manually invited them into the group and switched back and forth. Keep in mind IS Boxer gives you ability to auto-invite, but that goes into the more advanced stuff that we're not getting into today. And I'm back on my warrior. And so now what I want them to do is I want them to target me. So my first one is target warrior, target warrior. And you can see how it changed in both of their things. So I can see that they're targeting me now. And then I can hit follow and follow. You can see them turn here. So now they are following me. Works out pretty nice. Now then, as you know in EverQuest, to um, unleash a character from follow, you have to pretty much do that with WASD. And so since we're not doing any, um, since we're not uh, going into key mapping right now, the one of the easy ways to do that is just, you know, you can easily flip over just one little move and you've got them unleashed now. But there's another way you can do it too if you are good about remembering steps. So I have them follow me and follow me. I noticed that they were both still ta targeting. And they are following. And then the next thing that I'm going to have them do, then I'm going to go up and turn on my broadcast repeater. And since I'm facing one direction and they're facing the other, just one simple move backwards and they're unleashed. But immediately turn that broadcasting off. So now I've got it. So this is how you can get them to follow you around. Oops. Target warrior. Follow warrior. Oh, follow. There we go. Here he comes. Follow. I was right clicking instead of left left clicking. Sorry guys. My mouse is set up different than most everybody else's. All right. So, I've got them following and I'm going to pull them into position. I'm going to pull one of these wasps. And so, now I'm going to turn around so that we're facing a different direction. Going to unleash them but they're in the position that I want. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pull this wasp, pulling it back. Oh. And so now I have them assist me. You can see that I've got their auto attack still turned on. I'm going to send the pet in. Start casting. And my warrior has all of the abilities of a wizard and a mage at his command. Well, folks. I hope that helps get you started using IS Boxer for all of its functions and its multiboxing functions. It's a great way to get your feet wet and start learning how to multibox with them. Keep in mind there's a lot more you can do with this, but it's this is a way that you can start on day one, start playing EverQuest with more than one character. And boy oh boy, get a few mercs on these guys, you've got a full group and a powerhouse you will be able to hit a lot of content you were never able to hit before and make your gameplay a whole lot more enjoyable. Thanks for watching.